Hello scientists, this is Dr. B and we're going to talk about independent and dependent variables today thanks to Concord Consortium and their Smart Graphs program for helping us discover independent and dependent variables. In this activity you'll learn about a situation and then answer questions about the variables involved. Scientists like us use terms like independent and dependent to discuss the variables in their experiments. In this activity, you will determine which variables are independent and which, pen which variables are dependent. Although the standard convention is to graph the independent variable on the x-axis, that's the horizontal axis, and the dependent on the y-axis, that's the vertical axis or the up and down axis, in many situations, there's no obvious reason to designate a variable as either independent or dependent. The variables may only make sense once you understand how the variables were measured. Let's go explore more. Make sure you download the lab sheet and you're answering questions as we go along. You can tell what page we're on, which will correspond to your lab sheet by the um, numbers down here. Let's go to page two. Scenario one, the road trip. You take a 10 day trip across the country by car. Let's say this is our car. At the beginning of the trip, you zero out the odometer and every evening you write down the odometer reading. So this is gonna be our car at the beginning of the trip. It's on zero on our number line here. Boom, boom, boom. At the end of the trip, we make a graph of the cumulative miles traveled versus the day the measurement was taken. Which of the following do you think is true? The mileage is, is the independent variable and the day is the dependent variable. Or B, the day is the independent variable and the mileage is the dependent variable. Or C, neither variable is independent or dependent. The image on the right, by the way, is an odometer, which measures the number of miles traveled based on the rotation of the car's wheels. This car traveled 91,308 miles. If you look on a motor vehicle that you might travel in, you probably have an odometer like this one. Some cars have a trip odometer, which just measures um, based on, uh, you can reset it for the trip you're on. This is probably the odometer for the whole car, how many miles it's ever driven in the lifetime of the car. Okay, so which one do we think it's true? Well, let's say it's day one. Do, 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 we drive so far. Now it's day two. Do, 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 we drive further. And we stop, we write down our number. It's day four, we're driving even further along this road. It's day four, it's day five, it's day six. Um, we have more and more miles as we go along. So think about, does the number of miles depend on the day or does the day depend on the number of miles? Explain your reasoning, use your claim, evidence, reasoning. So make a claim, which one is correct? Then give some evidence based on your personal experience or things that you've read, and then explain your reasoning. How does your evidence support your claim? So that's claim, evidence, reasoning. That's a way to explain what you think and why you think it. So let's go to page three. Now that you've thought about the independent and dependent variables, see if your response was correct. So I'll let you check it out in your version of the software. Now that you know which answer is correct on page three, we're on page four. We're back to our road trip. Here's an example of what your road trip might have looked like. In the independent variables is the days, independent variable is on the x-axis. That's the horizontal axis. So independent goes on the horizontal axis. 
The y-axis is for the dependent variable, or what depends um, on the independent variable. Here's another way of thinking about it. Does the number of days depend on the number of miles on the odometer? Or does the number of miles traveled depend on the number of days? The more, mi more days you drive, the more miles you accumulate. So think about that. Because the number of miles traveled depends on the number of days, mild miles is the dependent variable. There are already some example labels, but now you need to add your own. Click a point on the graph to add a label and then double click to edit it. Drag an arrow so that it points to the correct place on the graph. So if we went to, if we saw a moose, I'm going to guess uh, went to Ely, Minnesota. That's a good place to find a moose. If we were traveling here, maybe we crossed the Canadian border. If it's open. Maybe down here on our way, stopped for ice cream at Dairy Queen. Not everyone likes Dairy Queen. It's okay. I'm not promoting Dairy Queen or ice cream, but you know, sometimes in the summer. So now we have some labels on our graph that describes our trip. You can put your own labels, make something up, be creative. Now that you've included some labels, let's answer some questions about the road trip. You can move the labels to see points more clearly, like we could move this label here, get it out of the way. Tap the point that shows the day you traveled the most miles. Let's figure this out. So when we travel miles, we're making vertical distance on the graph. So when we've traveled the most miles, we've gone up the most in one day. So look for the part of the graph here where it's gone up the most in one day and click that point. I'll let you figure it out. So pause the video and click on the point that you think uh, where the most miles were traveled in one day. So here's scenario two. We're on page six. You hopefully figured out the correct answer for page five, and now we're rolling again on puppy size. Your pet dog has a litter of eight puppies. They're all very cute beagles with huge ears. At 10 weeks old, you weigh each puppy and measure the length of the ears. Which of these measurements is true? Weight is the independent variable, and ear length is the dependent variable. Ear length is the independent variable, and weight is the dependent variable. Neither variable is dependent or independent. So make an argument for one of the statements above. So state your claim. So which one is correct, A, B, or C? This is not the answer, don't copy this. You need to make a claim about which one is true. Provide evidence from what, from based on what you know about puppies and ears and mass of puppies or weight. And then give your reasoning. How does your evidence support your claim? So your answer should have three parts, claim, evidence, and reasoning. Stop the video and write your answer. So now we're on page seven. Your beagle puppies have a range of weights and ear lengths. Which of the following is true? Weight is the independent variable and ear length is the dependent variable. Ear length is the independent variable and weight is the dependent variable, or neither variable is dependent or independent. 
So here we see two graphs. Now that you've answered uh, question seven and we're on page eight, we can see that the top graph has weight on the x-axis and ear length on the y-axis. On the bottom graph, we have ear length on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. It's the opposite. So they switch the variables on these graphs. You can see that the variables are still correlated. Ear length and weight are still correlated, but one does not really cause the other. So neither one is dependent or independent. Let's go to scenario three. We have a toy car and we have a little bit of a ramp here. We can put our toy car on the ramp and let it go and slide down the ramp. You've probably done something like this with a toy car at home or maybe a ball. You roll a toy car down a slanted board and see how far it travels. Then you change the angle of the slant and repeat the experiment. So we could change our, our car could just be a little bit slanted or we could make it a really steep ramp and um, the car could really get going. You probably have a sense of this if you've ever ridden a bike or been on a roller coaster, the steeper the drop, whew, you're hanging on. Which of the following statements is true? The angle of the board is the dependent variable and the distance the car rolls is the independent variable. The distance the car rolls is the dependent variable and the angle is the port board is the independent variable or C, neither variable is dependent or independent. We want to explain our answer using the claim. So which one do you think is true? Then use some evidence from your own experience, either on a bike or using toys on a car ramp, or maybe you rolled a ball down a ramp, and then use some reasoning to connect your evidence to your claim. Why does your evidence support your claim? Why do you think A, B, or C is true? Using the evidence from your real life. So pause the video, finish your answer, and we'll go on to the next page. So scenario three, you roll a car down the slanted board to see how far it travels. So we're interested, once the car gets going and hits the end of the ramp, how far does it roll across the floor? You do this several times at different angles, using a really steep angle, using a really shallow angle, using a medium angle, and then you graph the data. Which of the following is true? The distance the car roll is the independent variable and the angle of the board is dependent. The angle of the board is the independent variable and the distance the car rolls is the dependent variable. Neither variable is dependent or independent. You can check your own answer and then uh, we'll go to the next page. So in this experiment, the ramp angle is the independent variable. So ramp angle is here on the x-axis. We decide the ramp angle before we measure the dependent variable. So we decide how um, high or low to put the, the ramp, and then we measure how far the car rolls out at the end of the ramp. So we decide this independent variable, that's how steep the ramp is going to be, and then we measure the dependent variable, how far the car rolled. On average, how many more centimeters did the car travel each time the ramp was raised by 10 degrees? Well, we can look here, the ramp is raised by 10 degrees and the car travels, this is about 20 to 120, so that's about 100 centimeters. I took 120 and subtracted 20. Or if I look down here, it's 119 minus 15 is 104. If I look at the next gap, this one went up from 20 to 30, so that's 10 degrees. If I take 211 and divide 119, that's 92. So that one 92, this went about 104. Um, if I do the next jump here, I take 308 minus 211, 
that's 97. So we're seeing a trend like 104, 90 something, um, and then we have 90 something again. So it's probably between 90 and 100. You can um, subtract all of these and take the average if you would like. Um, get a sense of about how many centimeters it is between um, as you raise that ramp every 10 degrees. And I'll let you figure that out. So now that we've completed the road trip scenario, the puppy weight and ear length scenario, and the toy car scenario, we should have a pretty good understanding of independent and dependent variables. Discuss the meaning of independent and dependent variables with the partner or somebody at your house, and then write down your thoughts below. How would you determine which is the independent and dependent variable? I'll give you some clues. Usually at the beginning of an experiment or our road trip, we choose the independent variable. For example, the road trip, we chose how many days we were going to travel. And then the mileage depended on what went what went on that day. Um, like, did we stop at a national park? Did we stop for ice cream? Was there something really cool? And we spent a lot of time out of the car um, visiting an interesting national park and we didn't drive very much. So the number of miles depended on what we did that day. The length the car rolled out after the ramp depended on how much potential energy we gave it. Did we make the ramp really steep and make the car very high off the floor so it had a lot of potential energy and that could turn into a lot of kinetic energy and roll far? Or did we make the angle very shallow? We didn't give the car a ton of potential energy. Um, uh, we didn't give it a lot of height between the floor and the car and it just rolled a little bit. So we decided the angle of the ramp and that's usually the independent variable. What depends on the independent variable, in this case, how far the car rolled, you measure in the experiment. Usually in an experiment, what you decide before the experiment is independent, and what you measure in the experiment is dependent. Because the dependent variable depends on what happens in the experiment. So you can come up with a good answer for page 12. This is page 13, and you have one more question to answer on your lab sheet. Thanks very much for watching. This is Dr. B signing off on independent and dependent variables.